This is Brooklyn College, Blackwash Avenue. Transfer is available to the B44 Select Bus Service. This is infrared. We're at the end of the line of the number two train and the number five train at Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn College, so that you don't have to be. It's Thursday, May 19th, around 5.20 p.m. It's cloudy but dry and around 60 degrees. But you can't tell that from here. Intersection of Flatbush Avenue and Nostrand Avenue. It's 5:22 p.m. on a Thursday, so it's rush hour. This intersection of Flatbush and Nostrand is also called the Junction. How did it get that name? Don't know. Is it from the junction of Flatbush and Nostrum? Was there some kind of connecting rail streetcar line here? I don't know. Anyway, we are going to start here and see a historic district and maybe a surprise or two. Oh, but even before we get to the historic district, we're going to see, or at least we're going to walk alongside the campus of Brooklyn College, as well as one of New York's higher performing high schools, public high schools. So this is one of um, the few, but I guess growing number of intersections in the city that um, allow pedestrians to cross in all directions at once and all vehicular traffic comes to a stop. Right here. So we are walking on Hillel Place. Mmm, that sounds good. We're on Hillel Place, which appears to be coming to an end at Campus Road, which is also known as Jerry Jacobs Way, 
I don't know who Jerry Jacobs is, was most likely. But the campus refers to the Brooklyn College campus. Hey, a responsive walk signal. And remember, it is May 19th. We're going to follow Campus Road. Campus Road? Yes. All the way around campus. You're not going to enter the campus now. I don't. I think you need ID to enter the campus. It's the uh, freshman recreational facility. This road curves around to our left to follow the perimeter of the campus. Given that it's May 19th, I don't know where Brooklyn College is in its academic year or semester cycle, whether the spring semester has ended already and summer is about to begin or classes continue for another week or so. Brooklyn College is one of the many units of the City University of New York. to the category of informative but unnecessary song. <laughs> so on the other side of the street we have a mix of six-story apartment buildings and looks like two-family homes. And I said before that we were going to pass one of New York City's higher-performing public high schools. This is Midwood High School. This is part of the original Midwood building. And it is still part of Midwood High School, but um, maybe 15 years ago, Midwood High School was expanded across the street a uh, new science wing was constructed across the street with a multi-level pedestrian bridge over Bedford Avenue connecting the two parts of the campus. So the pedestrian connector
the newer addition, which is the science wing. I don't know if it's still this way, but when I last visited Midwood High School about 20 years ago, the first thing you see when you enter the lobby is a bulletin board showing where all of the previous year's graduates went to college. We're in the Midwood neighborhood. There's, um, Midwood, the term Midwood is pretty geographically broadly applied in Brooklyn. I can't even tell you what the firm boundaries might be, or even soft boundaries. Must be walking on a bike path. It's the only possible explanation. What a nice mascot.
This is Ocean Avenue. And uh, so we're at the western boundary of Brooklyn College. And there's, I don't know, is that their one time crematorium? where the underperforming students go. It may be an old electric power generating station. Um, I don't know. And look up ahead, we see uh, the copper colored street sign indicating. We are coming to an historic district. <clears throat> and I was previously unaware that there was an historic district here. But the closest one was Ditmas Gardens, a little bit north. Um, and because the sun is in my eyes, I can't even read what the name of the district is. Okay. Um, I don't know, maybe some one of the neighbors didn't like the historic district designation and bent the sign. So it's the Fisk Terrace Midwood Park Historic District. Who knew? Let's check it out. A new historic district. Does that sound like oxymoron? We are at the intersection of Glenwood Road and East 19th Street. So, uh, hello. <laughs> so let's continue to get a look at a few more blocks in the 
Fisk Terrace Midwood Historic District Midwood Park Historic District This is Glenwood Road and look how nicely the um, the median is landscape that's maintained by the city and get everyone else's lawn is nicely maintained mostly It looks like the historic district continues on this block of East 17th Street, north of Glenwood. Irvington Place, which I didn't know existed before. So, this is the furthest west we can get. The cross streets all become dead ends after this. dead end because as you can see there are uh, B or a Q train rising to the left and now descending to the right um, so uh, we're between the Newkirk Plaza and Avenue H stations and uh, this is um, a dead end light with an issue. It should be two red lights on top of each other. 
and only one of them is illuminated. Someone call 311. Anyway, as the B or the Q train begins to rise um, from the open cut here to become elevated starting at Avenue H, uh, you do see, if you look out the windows of the train, you see parts of these very nice uh, and now landmarked houses. And to me, the reassuring sound 24 hours a day of the B and the Q trains. So here we go, heading south now on 17th Street, East 17th Street. And here is probably an unauthorized sign that someone in the neighborhood installed. <laughs> I won't tell if you won't. There is a properly functioning dead end light. You see, this person comes safely to slow down. Okay. Again, look at the uh, city maintained median. Very nice. I've never seen a dead-end sign like this in the city before. A square dead-end sign. Only the diamond. Only the diamond. Glenwood Road now. <clears throat> so I guess uh, this is what comprises a cul-de-sac in Midwood Park. This is what passes for a cul-de-sac. A 
train heading to Coney Island or Brighton Beach. can see Glenwood Road continues on the other side of the track. Well, how will we get there? Let's see. And notice here, hmm. it's just the sign saying end and two small diamonds. But no double red light. All right, back on East 17th Street going south. Still in the historic district. The Fisk Terrace Midwood Park Historic District. So in Brooklyn, oh, look at that, that cobblestone inset in there. For what purpose other than decoration? Um, but like this street, Waldorf Court, generally a, a street like that that is um, less than one block long and just dead ends is designated a court. And then streets that are short in distance, but uh, they do not dead end. They have intersections at the on both ends of the street are generally designated as place. So here we have Wellington Court. Wellington Court is, at least right here, just one block long and dead ends. And we see the two red lights at the end of the block. All right. So, conformers two, non-conformers one.
So now we come to Avenue H. And Avenue H dead ends a block from here and you can see the train in the distance so the platform and the train are elevated now and here you see East 17th Street with a dead end and the two red lights at the end of the block so compliance rate so far 75% Why does that dead end? Well, let's find out. And indeed, we will find out, but not on this block. We're gonna go just a few more blocks. Approaching the Avenue H station, a local stop on the Q train. And Avenue H ends here, at least for now. So at this point, I think the right of way is still rising, but as a pedestrian or as a cyclist, you can go through on an accessible passageway that was created recently. And here is an entrance to the station. That would be a B train because it's not stopping here. And here's the passageway. I didn't see a thing. So that was our adventure crossing under the right of way at the Avenue H station. And <clears throat> why is this street at that end? Let's find out. Because even though this is a dead end for vehicles, I didn't know this existed until now. A little pedestrian bridge. seems so bucolic here, but here we are looking south, and what is this? This uh, was owned and operated by the Long Island Railroad at one time. It was their Bay Ridge Freight Branch. That's looking south towards Bay Ridge, and north towards 
um, towards Queens and ultimately over the Hellgate Bridge uh, to connect with the Bronx and the mainland railroads. So this is also part of, well, this is the part, the essential part of what Governor Hochul described briefly and broadly as um, a goal to create a new crosstown rail line of some kind along this right of way. And there is the sound of the B or Q train crossing over this freight line. The freight line is still active. Uh, it gets... Excuse me? I'm sorry. <laughs> it gets infrequent freight service. And the Long Island Railroad turned over operation... Not sure about ownership. The operation may be under a lease. To the New York and Atlantic Railway. They have their own locomotives. So we're going to go back to Avenue H. Now that we've crossed under the tracks. And we're going to go left, which is west. Oh, and here's uh, another entrance to the station. Look at these houses across the street. And here we are at Rugby Road. We're going to turn north onto Rugby Road. And while this is not part of an historic district, it's very nice nonetheless. <laughs> oh, and here's a uh, solar installation across the street. I have not seen very many solar installations in Brooklyn either on houses like this or on um, relatively flat top roofs like you find on brown cells or large apartment buildings.
and down at the end of this block. Neither of the two red lights is illuminated. I don't even know how to score that. Now remember before, when we were still in the historic district and we walked down Glenwood Road on the other side of the B and the Q. So here we are at Glenwood Road at the last block on this side. And there appears to be some kind of live music performance taking place on this block and here we have the B and the Q train right away in the background let's see how well the music and the sound of the train blend together So, can the performing arts coexist peacefully with infrastructure? You must decide. I can just barely hear the music still playing. 
nearly two blocks away. So that's pretty good. Okay, two red lights. We're at Foster, Foster Avenue <laughs> and Rugby Road. So now we're heading east on Foster Avenue. Here we have Foster Avenue crossing over the right of way for the B and the Q. And this area is called Newkirk Plaza, which is also the name of this station. This station. familiar green and white globe up ahead it says there's an entrance to the subway somewhere I don't know what the history is of Newkirk Plaza when it was if it was open to traffic at some point and was recently converted to a plaza. The station was uh, from the beginning named Newkirk Avenue. Uh, and sometime in the last 10 to 15 years, it became Newkirk Plaza. And this is where we're going to end today's walk Newkirk Plaza an express stop on the B and the Q thank you for sharing this walk with us this is infrared and this is what you've been watching and listening to and remember to support live music bye